Hi, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R, storyboard artist, illustrator. And today what I want to talk to you about is coming up with ideas of drawing when you can't think of anything to draw. Um, I've got two books here. One is the National Audubon, Audubon Society's first field guide of mammals. And I've got a um, backpack book, fun facts about insects. Um, you can use any um, reference material you want. What's really fun is pick two opposite types of animals. Um, this one's mammals, this one's insects. You could do like fish and birds or insects and fish or just pick two very kind of opposite animal groups. You could even pick two very different kinds of mammals or two very different kinds of insects. But the more different the animals you choose, the more fun it'll be. And this is something you can do to improve your animal drawing as well as just have fun and come up with something in your imagination. What you want to do is just not pick a random animal. Let's chipmunks, chipmunk, Jackrabbit, jackrabbit's good. There we go. How about a cottontail? There we go. We'll use um, an, a cottontail. And then in um, facts about insects, we got all kinds of fun insects in here. Hmm. Caterpillar. Maybe give them half rabbit, half caterpillar. Um, half rabbit, half uh, um, wasp. Uh, let's see here what looks interesting. Now it's going to suit our fancy. Ah, there we go. That was fun. Let's see. Moth. Rabbit moth. Ooh, that would be cute. We do a rabbit moth. Um, yeah. Oh, there we go. We'll do a rabbit. Or we'll do a rabbit mixed with a beetle because beetles got the, these really fun legs. And with rabbits, they've got the fuzzy long ears and stuff. So... What we're going to do now, since I've got pick, pick my idea, we've got a rabbit. We've got a horn beetle here. Let's see if I can do that so you can see what I'm doing. Put a paperweight right there to help me out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take elements of this animal and mix them with elements of that animal. Sorry about that. I had the, the initial drawing I was doing quite a bit off camera. And I just wanted to put it back into camera so you could see what I was doing. And I didn't want to edit out what we originally talked about. So we're going to start continuing on our rabbit from here. And you can see right now that it's a really, really scribbly drawing. And what I'm going to do, I, I bring up the, about this in a lot of my videos. Um, I like to use a kneaded eraser to basically what I'm going to do is everything I've drawn here right now. I'm taking my kneading eraser and I'm almost erasing it entirely off. I'm not totally erasing it. Um, this is a technique I call ghosting back so that all that initial um, line work that I laid down, I can barely see myself on the paper here, but I've got a skeleton to start from. I've got a baseline of where all the pieces are so that I can move on from there. Now I'm going to do something a little tighter. Um, I usually do most of my drawings um, when I'm, I'm creating any kind of illustration at least three times, sometimes more than that. Sometimes you'll redraw the thing, you know, five, six times, especially if you're painting, you'll almost, you'll, you'll repaint over the top of whatever you've drawn um, many times while you're working on it. Um, because it's, it's almost like if you've ever carved wood, how you keep sanding and sanding down the wood to get a more polished quality to the drawing. And that's what I'm doing here is that I'm going to keep bringing it down and down and down until I get the drawing that I want. Now, a lot, some people are a lot more precise when they draw. And this is just me. And... You might draw in a different fashion, but this is the way I kind of do my work. And this this type of work, way of working might work for you, and it might not. Um, as you progress in your drawing, I would highly recommend look at the way other people draw, look at the way they create, 
and that'll help you find that the way you want to create and everybody will give you different pointers and different techniques and it's finding the things that feel best for you and work best for you for me, for me and you um, I'm still learning too I mean I've been working at this you know since I was very little and I still feel that um, I'm always learning I'm always picking up some new idea um, new technique that I hadn't tried before so right now we're doing the horns I'm setting up this stuff I'm really concentrating more on the character of this little guy so I'm working on I'm gonna work on his shell here and I'm really looking at how this particular I like this pose I like the way this beetle is set up and I'm using reference here on how the face is done with the rabbit to give it elements of the rabbit as well with a cotton tail while I'm creating this beetle and he has this you know looking where the placement of his legs are in this particular um, photograph so that um, the thing is too is since I'm creating this creature out of my imagination as well as the reference material I don't have to follow exactly what my reference material is doing I'm using it as a guiding for what I'm doing to give it more of a feeling when it's done it will have um, a quality of feeling more realistic or more like something in the natural world when I'm utilizing information from a photograph or you know you could could use an actual um, you know drawings that you've taken from the zoo when you go to the zoo you use sketches as reference material from things that you've drawn in the zoo um, there's all kinds of ways that you can find and use reference and make it work for you so I'm gonna these are his his feet on the side and then he's got a split tail kind of he's by um, with this both animals are bilaterally symmetrical which means they're divided in two um, if you're using like a starfish or um, well starfish are radially symmetrical I was gonna say an octopus but an octopus is actually divided down the center too they have their radially and bilaterally symmetrical oh boy <laughs> words for today and I'm gonna give him I think I'm gonna give him a little bunny tail right there I like I do like the idea of a little bunny tail so I'm gonna just put a little bunny tail there so we have more of a character now being fleshed out here now that that I've done that okay so this is again this is my second drawing my second rough over the first drawing that I did and again I'm gonna take this goes to back and this one I'm not I won't um, erase as heavily but enough again so that there's a hint of the drawing is left underneath so I've got all my guidelines are more or less left there but I won't I'm not gonna draw the um, erase as hard as the last one and on this too um the lines that you really want to show through usually are heavied up a little bit more so as you're erasing the more important lines have a tendency to stay in focus and the ones that are less important um, will be will fade away more they'll they'll disappear more as you're racing away so now I'm gonna go come in with um, this is a uh, Prismacolor um, uh, Tus Rouge Tuscan um, I used to call it Tuscan red there it is of course it's got it's both and it's in French and, and English of course that I didn't see this is a it's a PC 937 um, what you'll find when you're using colored pencils is that they um, have besides having a different color they will have a different um, hardness to them some will be softer or harder depending on the color and I happen to like Tuscan red a lot because it's somewhere between a red and a brown and it has a nice soft feel to it as we're um, as I'm sketching this uh, I'm also I'm drawing this on um, a piece of cut um, arches hot press watercolor paper and that's because I can take this after I'm done doing this drawing 
um, I may come back in with watercolor and it's a heavy enough paper that I could come back in with ink if I want to or uh, watercolor or acrylic um, or um, I think probably I could use uh, um, chart pack or the, the um, uh, markers on it. Um, so I have a lot of options. When you use a nice um, thick paper, you have a lot of options of how you can further um, finish a drawing. So you don't necessarily have to have just the drawing. I could just finish this up as the drawing itself, or I can come back in with watercolor after the fact. I'm going to give him a little bit of a smile. This is a character. This is not going to be like quite a, um, a, uh, um, how shall I say? It's not going to be more of a, a, a natural history type drawing as he, as it is going to be more of a, um, more like a, a an animated character or cartoon character like he would, might use him um, in animation or in a comic book or in a children's book. So he's, this is just, again, because this is something out of our imaginations, you can do anything you want with it. And uh, if you're having one of those days when you just, okay, I want to draw, but I don't know what to draw, um, Google an animal. Just Google any animal, and you can just start out by drawing an animal, or did I say do two animals. Pick two animals, put them in two open windows on your computer, and use those for reference and then come up with a dual character like this one where it is made up of more than one character and then you've got not only like i said are you playing with your imagination you're getting to learn how to do like right now i'm working on the legs and with insects they have these interesting jointed legs their skeletons are on the outside rather than on the inside. And a lot of times they have, like with this guy, he's got little pointy um, barbs on part of his legs. And then he's got these segments. There are probably one, two, three, four, five segments. And some. His, the last part of the segment are these toes. So, And the thing is, is that you don't have to stick to the exact number of segments. It's like I'm thinking three here is fine. You don't have to stick to the biology of the animal. Just use it as a springboard for something new. And so that's what we're doing in present here. Okay, I need to get his leg up here. There we go. And the thing is, too, is when you're drawing with colored pencil, th this particular colored pencil does not erase. So it's almost, in some respects, like um, drawing an in ink in the where if you make a mistake, um, you can use a, um, a uh, knife blade to scrape it away and then come in with an eraser. But it's more difficult to uh, do that. Let me sharpen my pencil here a second. And just to show you, this this is the type of pencil sharpener I'm using is a, an Exacto electric pencil sharpener for my, uh, um, let's see if that is in the camera. There we go, Exacto. Um, but the electric pencil sharpener is good for when you've got um, colored pencil like this to get it sharpened up because as, as you especially on um, heavier stock paper it will uh, um, whittle down your pencil more you can use a sandpaper block to sharpen your pencils I've never been really good with sandpaper blocks for some reason I, I always <laughs> I'm just I'll, I'll just say I'm not great with sandpaper blocks and I don't like using them so I stick to things like pencil sharpeners. The electric pencil sharpener comes in really handy. They're a little pricey, but um, in the long run, if you're going to be using a pencil of any kind, whether you're using a wood pencil or colored pencils, they come in very, very handy. Um, I will also use um, mechanical pencils or you know, pencil sharpeners. Also work 
fine. Um, it's just I find that I often break off the tips very often when I'm using one of those. So we've almost got, basically I'm, I'm working on the outline here of our little guy, and then we're going to do a little bit of shading on him. But we're almost done with our, our little, I'm going to give him a little tail there. Won't really show much. I'm going to give him a tail anyways. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and heavy up the shapes and start putting some detailing in on him. And with his eye, I'm going to give um, a highlight. I'm going to put a little ball. And I'm going to lightly shade in. Now, you, with um, the highlight, I should have left more lighter area beneath the highlight. Sharpen my pencil again. Do my cheek here. So I anticipated that three quarters a little bit better. He's got real shiny eyes. Maybe give him some little antenna type things down here. More of an illusion of insect. Maybe a tooth. And you can see that there's this like little stippling on the uh, helmet. I'm going to do that. Give him little bits of. Uh, It'll give a little texture and interest when you put added lines. So th that's the thing too. Look at other people's work and see how they do cross hatching or detailing and make things look more interesting after the, the line work was put in. So we're heading up the lines, giving a little bit more outline here, and then I'm going to take the side of my pencil. I'm going to just put a little bit of shading at the side of the pencil. And there's texture on the paper, so the paper will take a little bit of that texture. And I'm thinking what I might want to do with this one is when I get done with it, um, maybe I'll do one more video where I'll come back in with some watercolor and some pen and we'll give some color to this guy and make him a completely finished illustration. But there he is. There's our little rabbit beetle. And you can do with this with any animal. I mean, um, say, mix an octopus with a butterfly or an elephant with a narwhal. Or, I mean, there's any number of, of opportunities or possibilities you can by just taking two animals, just as odd as you can pick, put them together, and make... A new critter. I'll give him a little bit of shadow underneath. Again, take the pencil to the side and you just do nice even back and stroke, fourth strokes. So the next time you're, you're not sure what to draw, 
and you just want to practice some drawing and just want to have an idea of something fun to do, just pick two animals. Any two animals. And you can come up with something fun and new and different. And this is a thing a, a lot of artists have done. It's not anything new, unique. You're not stealing anybody's um, technique or idea by trying to do something like this yourself. Whatever you come up with is an original and interesting possibility. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. My name once again is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. Please subscribe to my channel. Come back for the next one. And uh, uh, check out the links below. I've got a Patreon. I've got a store. Um, I've got all kinds of stuff online. Thanks for stopping by. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye.